God is good and all the time. Most welcome to our Mass this evening. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you. For it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. 
Give her a reward for her labors, and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Our response to the Lord's word is, Blessed are those who fear the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When people are saying peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them, like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers, but you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately, the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug, and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. 
After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the addition of five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you are faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you are faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share with your master's joy. Then the one who had received one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, You wicked, lazy servant, so you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter. Should you not then have put my money in the bank so that I could have got it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For, for to everyone who has, more will be given and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. God is good and all the time. So today I'm going to tell you a little story about Mother Teresa. So we are told that Mother Teresa of Calcutta, one day she was summoned to court on the charges of converting children to the Catholic faith. When she stood in the dock, the judge asked her if the charges were true. She asked for a baby to be given to her. Then she held the baby like this in her arms and said, this child I picked, I picked up from the dustbin. I don't know to what religion this child belongs or what language it speaks. I give this child my love, my time, my care, my food, but the best thing that I have in my life is the faith in Jesus Christ. Can't I give this child the best I have in my life? Was the question she posed. And the case was dismissed in favor of her. So she shared her best. So my dear brothers and sisters, this evening I would like us to reflect on the theme, are you faithful and fruitful? So it will be a question. So as you are aware, today is the 33rd Sunday. We are approaching the end of the year uh, of the church. So as we approach the end of the liturgical year, which we end next week, we are reminded of the end time or the second coming of Christ, the final judgment, 
and the necessity of being prepared. Now, if you look at the book of Proverbs, it revolves around the theme of life, the search for life, the quality of life, the fullness of life. And those who find wisdom find life. The first reading today has been taken from the conclusion of the book of Proverbs, in which the author presents and so personifies wisdom as an ideal wife. A strong, capable woman who is the fountain of life and stability for all her household. And as such, she stands out as the ideal for all human beings. Since she is hardworking, she is very generous, she produces food and clothing, she cares for the poor and the needy, and she is worthy of the fruit of her hands. So she is an example of resentment in everyday life. So we can say that she is wisdom in action, for she brings what is good and not what is evil to her husband during her earthly days. So an ideal wife. Now, while the text applies lit uh, literally to the woman who fears the Lord, we can also apply it to the qualities of each person who lives in expectation of the Lord. That is faithfulness and fruitfulness. Back to our question, are you faithful? Are you fruitful? St. Paul in the second reading is addressing a very anxious community of the Thessalonica. as regards the second coming of the Lord or parousia. So this community, they were convinced of the imminent coming of the Lord. And as, and as such, they began lazing around. So St. Paul is warning them against this mindset and is calling on them to stay awake and sober for the exact hour of the Lord's return remains uncertain. So they ought to continue being faithful and fruitful. Then Jesus in the Gospel reading instructs his disciples, we included, with the parable of the talents. He tells of a man who entrusted his possessions to his servants each according to his or her ability. To one, he gave five talents, to another, two, and to another, one. And embarked on a journey. So it is good to, to understand when you talk of this talent, it may be different from our English understanding of talent. During this time, a talent was a huge sum of money. One talent was equated to wages of 15 years. Now if you do that, that math, how much can that one be? Salary of 15 years in the States, almost one million. So it was a huge amount. So that one was given like one million, another one, two million, another one, five million. And then the, the master uh, embarked on a journey. But later on, they were to give an account of what they did with their talents. So as we draw close to the end of the liturgical year, one thing remains certain, that the Lord, like the man in the parable, will return. But while he's away, he has uniquely given us things to do, those talents, things to care for, things to develop and grow. 
And since waiting for Jesus requires faithfulness, commitment, and creativity, so at the moment of his return, what are we going to submit? I would like us, therefore, to, to reflect on our lives and the gifts, the talents that God has given to each and every one of us. The opportunities that God has placed right before us and the people God has brought us into contact with in this life's journey. And as we think of those, I want us to remember four things. Number one, God has given each and every one of us a special gift or talent according to our ability. Then number two, the greater the gift or the talent, the greater the responsibility. Jesus says, to one who has more, more will be demanded. And even the one who does more, more will be given. Then number three, the lazy and the unproductive will be punished. Remember the guy with one talent. Even what he had was taken away. So he said, I feared. Then number four, God blesses generous sharers. The talent which God has given you is not only for you to hide, but to share with others. Make use of it, not only for your own benefit, but also for the benefit of others. Therefore, are we making the best of what God has generously given to us? Are we faithful and fruitful? Or else, what is that talent we have buried? May, our mother, may the mother of God and, and our mother teach us to be faithful stewards of, what, of whatever God has bestowed upon us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us now arise and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to die the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now present our prayers and our petitions to the Lord. For our church, all who lead us, may the Holy Spirit guide and strengthen all the faithful. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
For world leaders, all newly elected government officials, those suffering from the coronavirus, and victims of natural disasters, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, and all who serve the Lord in this special way, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering, those near death, especially those who are alone, for thoughtful caregivers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in need of financial support, for the unemployed, for those who are lonely and forgotten, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish family, our sister parish, the prayer line intentions, our beloved dead, and all who mourn, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Carol Voisin, for whom this Mass is celebrated, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now turn to the intercession of our dear Mother Mary as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God Almighty Father. For our good and good of all the souls, church. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain, and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from the unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word and my soul shall. If you are receiving communion, please remain standing in your pew. If you are not receiving communion, please be seated. The priest will come to you. Please keep your nose and mouth covered except when consuming the host. At this time, please remember the sacred host should only be received in the hand. Thank you.
few announcements this evening. Uh, many of the di diocesan offices strive to help families in their primary role as educators of the faith. They provide resources for individuals of all ages with digital resources such as the Sunday Experience and The Way. They also sponsor the Blue Mass, the Golden Wedding Anniversary Mass celebration and retreats. These are just a few of the ministries and projects funded by our pledges to the Bishop's Annual Appeal 2020. Thank you to all of the parish families who have committed their support to the Bishop's Annual Appeal. To date, 157 families, equaling 39% of our parish families, have pledged $47,573 to help us reach 73% of our parish goal. There are still families who we have not heard from. Please prayerfully consider joining your parish family in this important initiative and make your pledge this week. Let us continue our efforts to achieve our goal of $65,018. November is the month to remember our beloved dead. There is a box in front of the altar in which you may place the list of the deceased members of your family. At each Mass during the month, they will be remembered in prayer. Next Sunday, November 22nd, six of our St. Ambrose students will be confirmed at a special Mass at 1 p.m. Please keep these young people in your prayers as they receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And please take home a bulletin today. It contains a letter from Bishop Bradley concerning liturgical gatherings and the COVID-19 virus. This letter is also posted on our website, our Facebook page, and the diocesan website. Just to remind you that we're still following our dismissal procedures. Father will recess as usual. Please remain in your seat until an usher releases your road to exit. This will begin from the rear. We ask that you maintain social distancing as you exit the building, and please do not gather in groups outside. Thank you. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. So as you go home, you remember, are you faithful? Are you fruit fruitful? with your talents. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless and protect you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Have a wonderful evening. Amen.